Okay, today I'm just going to talk about SDR Sharp and where we're going to find SDR Sharp, how to install it, the latest version. Um, it doesn't install quite the way a normal program would install. It, it, it's just a very superficial install and I'm going to show you probably the best way of just tucking it away uh, and creating a few shortcuts on your desktop. That way, at least you can get to it quite easily. Uh, um, we're manually doing what an automatic install would normally do. But okay, I've already got it installed, but we'll 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 do it again. So first things first, we're going to jump on our web browser. Now I prefer something like Chrome, um, and we're going to go to www. Airspy. It'll go for us. Uh, Airspy com okay we're going to go down to the download section up here okay here we got the the core tools which is what we're interested in um, with the latest version so we're just going to select download and just down the bottom here you'll see the actual files starting to download now I actually use a piece of software called WinRAR um, it's essentially it's a it's a decompression program um, but I'm finding more and more with radio software that some of this stuff is actually WinRAR uh, type file so it's it's ending in RAR instead of a, a, a zip file so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this and it's a demo copy but it doesn't matter right so I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it for SDR Sharp 2, just so that we know which one it is. Well, I'll call it 2016, there you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to open that up. And I'm going to tuck it over to one side. And here are all our files. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them, if it will do it for me. There you go. I'm going to select all our files. And I'm just going to drag them over to the other side and that is pretty much it okay we now get rid of that um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create uh, we're not going to create any any shortcuts just yet but I'm going to close that now and okay so once you've once you've installed the the, the file to your desktop though this this folder to your desktop you're going to come down here to the start menu and you're going to come here to file explorer and you're going to go to uh, C drive and you can see here program files 86 just drag highlight the files 86 wherever that's gone keeps moving okay and then just let it go and it just says you need to provide administrative permission and just say yes and now it'll move that folder across to your program files 86 just scroll down program files 86 and then find the file we just dragged in there which was called SDR sharp so RS so you got SDR sharp 2016 as our folder and now what we're going to do is there are a few things in here that we're interested in or you might be interested in one of them is air, uh, ADSB spy XE we're going to create a shortcut for that okay and we're going to drag it to the desktop okay and then we're going to scroll ourselves down and we're going to come to str sharp exe we're going to right mouse click on that we're going to say create a shortcut and we're going to drag that off onto the desktop um, and we can say replace the destination because i've already done it but that's okay so that's that one done okay and then you're also going to be look at spectrum spy okay you're going to right mouse click on that one and you're going to create a shortcut and there you go and just drag it over to the side now they're the three main programs that we're, we're interested in and uh, there could be one other in there which i've forgotten about but for the time being it doesn't matter okay and now we can close that folder now then so now I've actually plugged my air spy in. Doesn't need doesn't need any drivers, and that's the R two. 
I haven't got a spy verter attached, that doesn't matter. Okay, and I'm going to run the software. Okay, we're going to expand it. And you can see up here, there's a, a, a source a directory. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select one of the choices. Now, you, you might have one of the other, other devices, which is fine. You can just select one of those devices. Well, I haven't. I've got an SPI. I'm going to select SPI. At this point, it's showing a zero gain. You're going to need to put a little bit of gain in. Let's put, I don't know, 19. Don't worry about the sample rate at this time. Um, we don't need the spy verter. We don't have that attached. I'm going to leave it on wide FM because we'll, we can play with the broadcast um, stuff. Um, you don't need to to, kill it, to uh, correct any IQ or swap any IQ. Um, and that's pretty much us done for the moment. And we can say start. Okay, let's turn the volume down a little bit before we blow our ears out. And now we should be able to start that. Oh, can't find the SPI device. Okay, no problem. Well, it could mean what we do is we'll just unplug the device, which is under the microphone conveniently. Just take that out. And then plug it back in. And let's try it again. Right, there you go. Okay, so you can you can see it's now working. Um, but it is overloaded. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn some things down. We're going to use these sliders on the right hand side just to kind of tone things down a little bit. And now we can actually see some signals buried beneath all the uh, vivid colors. Um, let's try and just tone these things down a little bit more. OK, now we can start to see a little bit of detail. And that looks like voice or music going on there. Um, so let's, let's have a little tune in. Um, and let's see what we've got. Okay, right, we've got no audio by the sounds of it. So that, that that's fine. Nothing. Oh, we have. Okay, what I should actually say at this stage is that if I stop that, okay, if, if we scroll down here to audio, you've actually got some, some outputs here. Well, I've actually got several here. Well, I'm going to... Um, I'm actually set mine here to sound mapper. Um, you can set this to to one of your output devices, you know, depending on which one you've got. I mean, you might even have something like virtual um, audio cables, which will enable you then to pipe the audio from this into, say, something like DSD Plus, where you could possibly decode, I don't know, um, Next Edge or what, whatever it might be, um, a DMR. Uh, D star C4 FM whatever you like you can you can do all these sort of things later but you can right now we're gonna we're gonna select speakers okay and we don't want to filter the audio at this stage we just uh, we'll leave it going as it is so we'll go back now okay and we should have some audio there you go okay now to tune this what we're gonna do is you quite simply hold the mouse over the top. Now I'm using the mouse wheel, which is the simplest way of doing it. Um, and you can then scroll through the, the, the different frequencies. And or you can actually just click on the actual uh, spectrum display. Um, and that works an absolute treat. Um, now let's just say, for instance, we want to go to I don't know, let's go and have a listen to some buses. So let's turn this down for a second. So we'll listen to the um, sort of something like the, the bus network, which is on about 139. Now, again, you, you, here you can see there's an awful lot of activity. Now, you, you can see that it's all quite narrow band, and we might want to zoom in a little bit. So if you come up here to the top right hand side, you'll see the slider. Now, you can slide this and expand any, any bit of this. And now we can actually say click. On any of those let's just see what that is mm, bit of a dead carrier okay let's let's scroll up um, let's turn that down just a smidge oh there you go there's a bit of voice 
Okay. Right, okay. Well, made a bit of a mistake here. I've actually left this in AM. So if you come along here, you can see that there's narrow FM, wide FM, all these sort of things. Just click in the... Let's turn that down. Um, click in the narrow FM. And now, or oh, actually, you can also see that it's dancing around. That's actually snapping to to something. That's we don't want that. So that if you come here, that to snap to grid, you can turn that off. And now it won't snap. So now we can listen to what we want to. Okay. And all I'm doing is just clicking on the on the audio. bit of audio there just click just clicking around that's a bit of audio with the ragged edges okay we can turn the signal up just a little bit if we want to You can just see that it starts to come up just a little bit. There you go. And we're gonna we're gonna shrink that down. Now you can hear there's a little bit of hiss. You can you can actually include some filtering. You can actually enable some IF filtering. put a little bit of squelch in there you see the squelch is enabled and then you just come up with the squelch till that's gone there you go it's about 71 72 there you go just scroll down let's find some more audio okay there's a bit of audio there straight away and it's gone <laughs> should be still there Oh, there you go, another bit of audio. So this is the first call to open in five mobiles. This is our finishing line for running to the garage. Again, you can hear the difference the filtering's making. So basically, we, we've we've had we've played around with some basic filtering um, here. I've shown you how to work the squelch. I've shown you how to set the the different uh, modes, whether it be AM, wide FM. In fact, I made a mistake earlier. Let's um, let's turn that down. If we go back to um, if we go down back down to broadcast FM. Okay, that should have been in wide FM. It, it would actually, it normally changes. And you can see on the later version here also that they've actually now put these band plans so you can actually see when you're going into, um, you know, depending on which, um, obviously, the area in, in the band you're going, it's actually highlighting it. Now, you can actually create that yourself as well, I should, should add. You can actually put in here, you can set whether or not you want that on or off and you can also show um, you can set this to actually your memories you can actually set to show up here so if there's a particular uh, memory so we can say we'll create a new one and we're going to call it um, broadcast just for the want of something um, classic radio okay and there's its frequency don't need any shift um and you can say set it to a favorite and you say okay now we should there you go show in the in the in the spectrum so now if we want to you can see which which radio station it is it's highlighted and if we want to go back to it now we can just double click on the memory and it'll go straight back this is a fantastic piece of software 
best of all, it's free. Um, it works with all sorts of, uh, of uh, dongles, um, but it's designed to work with the AirSpy uh, predominantly. Um, and because it's by AirSpy, uh, uh, Youssef is a, an amazing guy with, with this, this software. Uh, he sat down with me one evening and, and we went through this uh, you know, quite extensively and it completely blew my mind. It's, it's really very powerful. Um, and it's a fantastic piece of software, but obviously it it goes very well with the really fantastic AirSpy R2 and the AirSpy Mini, which both of which I absolutely love. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, there's probably better SDR um, modules out there, I, I'm sure. However, for the money that they cost it's it's an amazing product they're extraordinarily uh, sensitive and um, you you can you can control um the, the the gain on them and the one thing i haven't actually mentioned is some of the decimation um you can actually set things like this decimation which change how you can see straight away how much it's isolated a signal um, it's very clever how how that works, and you probably it probably be better to read up on it more than me waffle on about it. But at the, the end of the day, it's a very useful tool if you're trying to clarify a signal. It it seems to 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 lower the the noise level and then just bring the the, the signal or leave the signal where it is. So you've almost got this kind of difference in in the the noise signal to noise ratio. It's fantastic, really really good. Um, Please have a play. Um, by all means, you know, get yourself a, an Air Spy or a Fun Cube or whatever it might be that, that takes your fancy. Fantastic products. Um, and as I say, this, this, this software is free. And also, if you then couple this up with something like DSD, you've got yourself a full fledged, um, you know, digital decoding setup. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks for listening. Um, and enjoy.